I'm Alex. I'm Kelly. And this is the The LaJoy Podcast. Podcast. This episode is brought to you by our Valeris Bookshelf Alley. If any product could be like bookmarked on your calendar, make it this one. We have sold out of this product uh, so quickly that we decided to bring it back, but it is as a pre-order. So the goal is to open it up for a sales window long enough for everyone who wants to buy it to be able to jump in and get it. Uh, the sales period is January 26th through February 19th, correct? Correct. And mark your calendar. I think if you go to our website, you can actually sign up to be notified. It's litjoycrate.com slash Valeris, V-E-L-A-R-I-S, which is a nod to the fact that the Bookshelf Alley takes place in Valeris during Starfall with Feyre and Rezand. It's just a very beloved little alley that fits right in between your books. It's beautiful. So make sure to go sign up to be notified and we out. We also want to tell you guys about our reading journal that we have in stock right now. This is one of my favorite items that we've ever created. It is something that we try to keep in stock at all times, and it's perfect right now with the new year happening. Um, It's a great way to keep track of your reading goals. There are so many different kinds of pages in there that are interactive. Um, We've got lots of fun pages for tracking the books you've read. You know, there's book to movies. There's Lots of pages where you can keep track of uh, the books from all over the world. I'm trying to yeah. remember that pages. Yeah, there's like, like world travel pages. Yeah. There's there's also like bookshelf pages where you can call it, fill in you your fill book titles in. and color them in. So it's just like a really beautiful way to interact with yeah. your reading. I love it because then you can really just keep track of your review, your star rating, your thoughts, a favorite quote, things like that as well. And these are perfect for book clubs. I actually did give these out to everyone in my book club last year. Everyone's very excited to start filling them out. So just wanted to remind everyone to go check out those reading journals and they do come in several colors. And we are here today with guest Devin Ryan, the yeah, influencer, <laughs> Instagram personality, book club president extraordinaire romance wow. reader well, romance That's, expert we'll call you yeah, expert oh, no one's ever called me that before so. <laughs> <You're> like, welcome. <laughs> i know devin we found we met on instagram mm-hmm. um followed devin with her viral series can this character find the g-spot which was a my blast. claim to fame your claim Come to, to fame. find out Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it it's still amazing. going. It's still True, like yeah. happening, right? Mm-hmm. But that was uh, what got us through COVID. So yeah. thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. I love that for us. I for love that. for yes. all of us. Our yes. friendship. Um, and this is our second episode with Devin. So it's fun to have you back. We had so much fun yes. in the first recording. Well, and we so. could have just kept going. So it's good that I'm back. So we can keep going. Yeah. Keep I, chatting. I love that for us. We're so <laughs> <Yeah>. cute. <laughs> <laughs> in our first episode with you, we just talked about romance books. I feel like in general, we kind of talked about the romance genre, spice writing. Yes. And we can link to that episode. Fantastic discussion. And we knew immediately we wanted to have you back on. And so we're like, yes, so excited. When we meant we did my chili pepper scale. Yes. So yes. today, if I now mention the chili pepper scale. Mountain Everybody Mountain. knows yes. how spicy we think it is. Yes. I love it. Yeah. So we're we'll good to go. What uh, what are we talking about today? Today, I'm going to share my six books for 2024 that I'm most excited about. I love this. And I most of them are in series except for one. So that one will be is like its own little standalone. But the rest, you can get started right smack for Valentine's Day. Perfect. Perfect. So you can start now and then kind of like as they continue come the series. Yes. Okay. Yes. Only one of them is before Valentine's Day. Okay, perfect. But okay. and I'm assuming are these all in the romance genre? Always. Come on. I'm just assuming. She's always. like this sci-fi fantasy. We're all like, what? Yeah, murder mystery. No. <laughs> but I know that you had been reading like Throne of Glass lately. So I was like, I don't know, maybe she threw in one. Did you I actually hated it? I'm yeah. so sorry. I did. I did. I couldn't finish it. I still have every intention of finishing it. Throne of Glass, how far did you get? Six books. Okay. okay. Six books in. I'm impressed so you got like that I didn't, far. Right? Like, it's not like I didn't give it a fair shot. That's a very fair shot. It was yeah. It was painful at times. I know, because so. I remember on your Instagram, you were like, I'm reading Throne of Glass, guys, and it's a lot, but, like, also not enough. And I'm like, that's the perfect way to describe yeah. if you're, you're a romance reader through and through yeah it's not enough romance no. and it's a lot of world building and yes. magic <laughs> i feel like it i never read game of thrones or lord of the rings but i feel like it would be so similar just a lot of mm. 
mm-hmm. places, a lot of people, a lot of just That's a fair. lot yeah. of yeah, yeah, stuff that I don't want to read, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> so now you know, great. Yeah, <laughs> but my first book okay. kind of ties in. Okay, okay, because uh, Crescent City Three. Yes. I could have my own podcast just talking about Bryce and Hunt. Really? Like, I'm so I'm obsessed with them. Have you guys more? read Crescent City? It. Yes. Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. I'm up to date. So when this comes out, it would already be out. So Yes. So if you haven't started Crescent City, I love that you're giving this as a recommendation for Sarah. Because most people love Akatar the most. Yes. And then like thorough, like thoroughbred fantasy readers always prefer Akat- or prefer oh, Throne of Glass right. because there's so much like war scenes and world building yeah. and magic. Yeah. yeah. And um, and so I love that you're talking about Kristen City because I'm like, oh, it's her series for romance readers. Well, it's so underrated too. Yeah. And I feel like Akatar is more, way more romance than Crescent City is. Yeah. I feel like uh, Crescent City to me felt like Miami Zootopia. That's fantasy. what it is. A hundred percent. Yes. I don't know. I heard it as Miami Vice meets Zootopia. And yeah, I was like, also Miami Vice. <laughs> okay. Well, I didn't read it for so long because everyone kept saying like the world building is painful. It's painful. Ooh, well, you have to get through it. Painful. And I do yeah. feel like the first hundred pages was kind of like, okay, uh, do I have to memorize all of these people? Do I? Because the first little bit of it is explaining how their government is set up and all of the different like little factions. And yes. so it is a lot kind of at first, but I love a murder mystery and that okay. is what Crescent City is. And so when I was reading, I was like, I think if someone had told me this is a fun murder mystery with romance in it, I would have been like, so I would have read this so much sooner. Yeah, But the ones who were kind of hesitant Sarah said you have to read Crescent City now if you want to continue to read Akatar. Ah, uh, fascinating. Oh, that's right. So she's basically said these are no longer standalone series. Well, I mean, when you got to the end of book two in Crescent City, I think mm-hmm. there was some things that happened that made that clear. Yes. And so you're like, oh, yeah. yeah. But now all yeah. the people that are like, no, I don't want to read it. I just want to read A Court of Thorns and Roses. I'm like, you can't. <laughs> you can't do that she, you know the, it's all tied together now yeah. and so crescent city three starts i think she said like six months after the end of silver flames fascinating okay so you have to so quarter silver flames nesta and cassian yeah. have a, a lot, lot of sex. sex. <laughs> yeah. That's the whole book. I'm like, mm-hmm. I loved it. Yeah. I know that people didn't like. A, I read it like a fa- like a romance, though. When uh, I read it, I, I wrote a, read it like a romanticy instead okay. of just like Akatar. Yeah, because I was like, they both have such like intense personalities that I was like, it's just going to be a lot of intense hate sex. So why are people <laughs> I so feel surprised? Like that wasn't enough. Which is probably fair for no, you. I do feel like. Um, <laughs> They, it was like a girl power book too, yeah. Silver Flames. And yeah. I feel like Crescent City, I mean, Sarah writes like good girl yeah. power characters in general. Yeah. But I feel like having the crossovers, like Crescent City 3 is just going to be so fun. What do you I'm love so about Bryce and Hunt? Tell, talk to Everything. me about Tell me why. Everything. They're so underrated. No one ever talks about Hunt. I do love Hunt. He's not my favorite Sarah Male boy, yeah. but male character yeah. i said boy who's your favorite of all the yeah. sarahs asriel really yeah i okay. am really hoping we get a book from his perspective me yeah. too because i feel like he's really underrated too i yeah. feel like i married an asriel <laughs> i i i know i did yeah and i'm always drawn to the quiet one mm-hmm. like i never want the main one never i'm like that is my personality and like a main person it's too much <laughs> you're like i'm too much <laughs> and then like the cassian by like the silly goofy we, we like friend zone each other mm-hmm. you know so i always go for like the s- silent but deadly one yeah, yeah we yeah, love yes. it and yeah. i'm so excited that's my most anticipated read of the entire year okay it's crescent city oh, i'm so excited i can't look at you does that i know i'm out? sorry does it come out in march do you happen to remember <laughs> it comes out this month on the 30th oh Oh. Crescent City 3 is January 30th. Do we have okay, a title? So it will, oh, guess. Yes. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it is House of Flame and Shadow. Mm. These names that fantasy authors have. I'm like, if I ever write a fantasy series, it will be one word names. <laughs> they have a glossary, I think, and court 
roses, ruin, blood. Yeah, blood, crown, castle. Yeah, crown. Crown. yeah. And then mm-hmm. I think they just close their eyes. It's like and a like ruin. Point. Yeah. yeah. Well, and she <laughs> is only contracted for three. But every time she's asked about it, she's like, well, I don't know, because there's like four houses. Yeah. Oh, I personally don't think there's going to be just three. Me neither. Yeah. But I've also heard she's writing another series. Yes. Within the same world or is no information? Know. Bloomsbury just says she, like her publisher says, okay. there's like a brand new. Mm-hmm. So. Nice. Maybe that. Well, well knowing her, it will be 40, but. Yeah. <laughs> this is fair. 40 years. Um, 40 years away. Oh, yeah, because you're used to reading romance. I'm like, I feel like she's put out this series quickly, but in fantasy, they put out series much more slowly than romance authors. No, I need them all I at once. I need like a Netflix session where they just, the <laughs> whole series comes out at one time. This is true. Yeah. Um, I did feel, I was kind of disappointed with the sex scenes in, the sexy parts in book two. Okay. I did. I did want more because there was so much built up in them, like not having sex in book one because they wanted to start their relationship off on the right foot. It was kind of a thing. It was a, the slowest burn of all time. I know. And so in book two, I was really. I think it built up a lot of. It was a bit of a build up. <laughs> I do feel yeah. like them not being physical was so out of character. It wasn't for her ro- YA stuff. No, for for Bryce. Yes, for, for oh. them, mm-hmm. their mm-hmm. characters in general. Like Bryce is very like sex positive, and yes. and yeah. then they for like I met know. like I know Sarah's like yeah, I was trying something new. Yeah, Did you see like, a slow, which I honestly about. feel like any other couple she's ever written it that would make sense. Yeah, even mm-hmm. Cassian and Nesta, like all the trauma. Been, yeah. yeah, like that could have even been a slower burn. But Bryce being like. Is weird to me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I'm like, okay. Mm, hey. Wait, did the, I'm going to do the spoiler free, but did the gym scene happen in book two or book two? What? Two. They, there was oh, that's, no, that's right. There okay. was no sex in book one. Yep. Okay. They all kind of blend together with Sarah's books for me. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I read them all. And so I read those pretty close to each other. Yeah. And I just remember being like, I have questions. <laughs> okay. For, yeah. I was like, first of all, even at the nicest of, t- of like, yep. apartments or hotels that I've stayed at where they have, like, a public gym room, I don't think I'd want my naked bum on a counter. You like, just I really think, have to hope that, you know, how, like, they have all the spray bottles and like, just, super that people disinfected are, like, that are doing their job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. But I just remember that being a unique scene that stuck out to me, Amal. See, and I don't know what that says about me that I didn't even think about it. I wasn't even, I was just like... <laughs> <laughs> this yeah. was before I got into romance last year. So okay. yeah, that's probably why I stuck out. And it, I okay. was mostly like, so is he like ejaculate lice, like lightning? Okay, there we go. We'll just <laughs> like, say it. Because it was like, kapow. I was all, <laughs> like, I didn't think about that, but now I'm going to. He's like his <laughs> own like vibrator. I was yeah. like, I was like, like I, if I would 100% have sex with a man who had a vibrator. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like if a different author would have wrote that, you can. I know, that's me. <laughs> That's right. my journey. <laughs> yeah. If I ever write a romance novel, he's Yo. going to have lightning jizz. <laughs> lightning jizz. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. But you have to put like mm-hmm. a thank you in the back of the book okay. to us. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you to Alex and Kelly. <laughs> no, it'll, there'll be like a whole forward like, hey, this was really important to us. This was our okay. journey that we had to go through <laughs> to write this. <laughs> thank Man, you, Andy. I know. I know. I love Sarah so much, though. Gosh. I've met her a I think twice we met her. I've only met her twice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just to, but when she was able to do more like public appearances and genuinely like one of the most kind authors we've ever met. Yes, and that. so she's got some she has got a massive imagination. That, uh, yeah. And it has changed the world of literature. Yeah. Like women readers. There's so many readers because of her. And People so, who don't even like to read. Yeah. Pick up those books and they're like, oh, OK. Yep. Salt. I know. And in for life. And her three series, I'm so glad you brought up Crescent City for book one because yeah. I'm like, I feel like the other two get so much more attention, yes. but I'm there's a reader for it. And so that's yeah. awesome. It's me. It's you. I am. Hi. I am that reader. I'm the reader. I it's love me. it. I love it. <laughs> I may be one of the only ones who no. are so passionate about it, but I love no. it. There's people love it. It's probably because it. it's not a finished series, too. I feel like mm-hmm. people really rally when the whole series is done yeah. as well. Mm-hmm. And I'm when I finished book two, I was like, I feel like she's just gearing up. Yeah. So if she's wrapping it up in a third book, I'd be shocked. 
Yeah. When it's you weird guys- to have the four houses, each one of the books. Yes. But like, I mean, that's what she's contracted for. So I don't know why she wouldn't contract herself for four. If that, you know what I mean? She yeah. gets three. She's, and she's kind of like Bloomsbury's bread and butter in so many ways. I think they'll just take any book well, that she so puts out. She <laughs> They're said, like so excited about it. She said that she had House of Flame, of Flame and Shadow. I'm not, I would never remember that on my own. She had it <laughs> finished, sent to the publisher, and then was like, you know what? Never mind. Scrap the entire thing and then rewrote the entire thing. Whoa. Wow. So, yeah. You know what I mean? That's not, I would love to interview her about that. That would be so cool to yeah. do that. Yeah. Most authors are not in a position to be able to do that. Yeah. I remember actually, re- like, it was in an interview with her that I was watching where she was talking about how she was originally writing, um, she was originally writing Empire of Storms, okay. and she kind of hit, like, a little bit of a bump where she was like, I'm not really into this right so now. So did I, um, that part. Wait. <laughs> I think it was literally that. Maybe we were at the same point. So in Empire of Storms, she kind of hit a bump. And then she went to, she started writing Kale Story, which happens simultaneously. Mm -hmm. Tower of Dawn Dawn simultaneously with Empire of Storms. And she was like, I started writing in the morning because I was like, I kind of have this idea of writing like this little novella about Kale. And she was 20,000 words in by that night. Like to write 20,000 words in a day. First of all, she's a very fast typer, super creative, imaginative. Yeah. So she's deeply talented. Yeah. And so, um, well, a lot of people she do could like the tandem read. Like there's like a whole list of to do a tandem read with Empire of Storms and oh. Tower of Dawn. So it's like two chapters from here, one here, one, three, like there, there's a whole list of you just like Google, like what's happening on a glass tandem read. And there's like, an that feels actual, a little high maintenance. Yeah. Yep. I'm like, I would probably, yeah, I would just read like boom, boom, back to back. Yeah. I, know. I just did a reread and Tower of Dawn is my least favorite in the series still, but is Queen of Shadows still, still your number good. one? Yes. It's such a good book. That one. Queen of Shadows. Four, number four. I think mine was number one. Really? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. But I'm team Dorian also. Love it. So I feel Him like. Him and Manon have kind of a sexy thing going yeah. on. Yeah. Little... Definitely. Was the ship scene that was in book. That was Six. in Empire. Yeah. Empire. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. I do nice. love Dorian. I like Dorian He too. was keeping me going, but. He's a bit of a shadow. Uh, Sh- shadow daddy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He is. Mm. I know. He also mm. has his. Oh, El- oh, I know. <laughs> shadow daddy. Shadow he has daddy. his Elsa moment too. Where he's like, let it go. <laughs> I'm into it. And he's like, icy. I you it. like lightning. Kapow. <laughs> I'll have shadow. Yeah. I'm more of just like a thunderstorm aesthetic because isn't, isn't Zayden. like Z- Zayden oh, from Fourth Zayden. Zayden. Do you like him too? I don't know if there's anyone who could not like him. I don't like him at all. What? No. <laughs> Give me I everything. <laughs> I, I don't. He's so immature. It's It was like, it's painful for me to read. Really? Yeah. I didn't get that at all. If you have ever been to a frat house, <laughs> I added. I he, went to BYU. <laughs> okay. Well, he is every single alpha male at a frat house, oh. which is also like what is wrong with men in general. Him. I hated him. Oh, no. A lot. Did you still enjoy the books? No. I loved Fourth Wing. I loved Fourth Wing. Iron Flame. Well, made you didn't me, like it? I was passionately angry. Uh, About the end, but you no, hated him throughout the whole thing. Really? Oh, okay, is that when you there. felt like you started to not like him? I didn't like him in book one. Okay, um, I didn't mind him, and then book two, him and like, Violet both. I just it was painful. Fascinating. It was painful. I love hearing your opinions because yeah, I'm know. like, well, I feel like everything he was like, just ask me, babe. Just ask me. And she's See? like, what am I supposed to ask you? And yeah. he's like, just ask me, and I'll tell. You. And I'm like. here's what i thought i didn't think it was when as i was reading i was like that's not toxic communication he's under a spell like because i'm so used to reading i wanted that me too because it would have given me a read and there there wasn't that's just i'm like there was a little bit but not much but not like where he physically couldn't tell her where like the spell was if someone asked you then you could tell like i was like okay i guess i don't know why that would be necessary (laughs) but that never happened so it was just the whole thing was like i'll be honest with you but you have to ask me these secret questions that i'm giving you no input to ask (laughs) And I was like, why are you doing that? That's true. Yeah. I, he's like, advice. I'm not hiding anything except everything just, you don't except ask. all of this. <laughs> I just, I, no. And then the whole book was just like, 
like the whole thing with the Griffins. Why was that necessary? What did they bring? Nothing. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. And then they were just like a little ambulance at the end. Like, why were they there? <laughs> Like, I would get it. There was like oh, a, no, no, no. like, they needed them to fight the war. Oh, no. that No, they they brought nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Wham, so no. And then I Wham. couldn't even enjoy the throne scene that everyone was like, the throne scene. Oh, my gosh. I was like, that, why did that happen? That wasn't because exciting for me. It no, was, it was like, okay, I was, but. I was mad. Because why was that happening? Because of an ex-girlfriend? Are we 12 years old? I can't. Mm. I can't. I know, I know. We, know. we they need to have a recap young. and just have you back on for this. We're gonna oh, come yeah. back on and talk. But let's do like every time a new book comes out, we'll have you back on to talk. And so you just like be salty about yes, some I'm of it. it. Yeah. I'm like, I will read every book in that series. I absolutely because, but, but I was like hate reading it, <laughs> and then I closed it, and I was like, I slapped it. I was. Like, I remember <laughs> your stories that night. I was so mad. I was like, what is in this Amazing. book? Amazing. She, she got so mad about. I was you know? so mad. So I've been dying to talk to you about it. I literally closed the, like, I, like, slapped the thing on my Kindle cover, and I was just like this, like, fuming Everyone's out of my like, ears. Okay. I was so mad. <laughs> no, I wasn't. I was mad. Because I was so excited, because I loved Fourth Wing so much. Yeah. We were just talking about this, about, I think we're very used to how fantasy rolls in regards to, like, kind of the algorithm of yeah. fantasy. And knowing yes. that we had five books coming, Alex and I were very emotionally prepared for yeah book two to end badly and we sure. know book three is going to be a hot mess sure you know and then it'll start to go on the up and up and, and then so. book four they'll start to discover themselves yeah and the book five they have to conquer all evil i'm I like that's just like how it even goes like the cadence of fourth wing like t- 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 it was mm-hmm. so easy and then iron flames like like all yeah. over the place i don't know i just couldn't do it yeah i think too it's it's a um i think i enjoy the characters and I think that they're, like, kind of easy for me to read. Okay. But when it comes to, like, being deeply emotionally invested in each individual character, I'm not as much in Fourth Wing. Okay. It feels more romancy to me than, mm-hmm. like, thir- like true fantasy. Yes. Um, Because, like, in my favorite character in fantasy, like, male character, we're talking about, like, our, like, our love, our fantasy love. And for me, it's Rowan. And it has been since I like okay. read books th- like Air of Fire. It's okay. always been Rowan. Yeah. And I just love his personality so much. Okay. And so I'm like, but it's not, it doesn't get spicy until like six or seven books and I was like, fine. to the series. Yeah. If you count the first one, it's like book eight that it gets spicy or something. It's like way, yeah. way in there. And so... I think that, like, it kind of depends on the genre who my favorite characters are. Okay. Because, like, I have favorite romance characters, but it's not, it's, like, in a romance novel, not in a romanticy. Mm. If that makes sense. Yes. Okay. Like, okay. the hottest male characters for me still are, or the most impactful are still probably the Max Monroe, like, Klein and and Thatcher Kelly. Ah, that, Klein, Bro- Klein Brooks. And yeah. Thatcher Kelly. Um, I was just like, from? which ones are they from? Do I need to read them? <laughs> The Bad yes. Boy Billionaire series. It's kind of an older series. Oh, okay. Okay. It's I've never two read it. women who were ghostwriters in a sense, not ghostwriters, but they went by their pen names okay. together. Together to write these books. I think they've announced yeah, it. Yeah, they but, you know, yeah, they they've announced there. But it, but I'm like, those are my favorite male characters mm-hmm. in books. I also feel like sometimes where you're in like a spot in your life or like totally. you're in like a mood, and then you read a book and you're like, wow. When you're like, if I had read that six months ago, I'd probably been like, eh. But right, so maybe you were just like in yep. the right, right place. It was like the book I needed. Yeah, and I came to my yeah. I'm like, yes, I love that. It's amazing. Okay, what's book ones. two? Let's hear it. Okay, um, the Windy City series. Have you guys read this? No, it's on my list. Yeah, this is a. Is this the Mile High Club? Is that a whole different series? Yes, that is book one. Okay, okay, okay. So they are from Liz Tom Ford, mm-hmm. and this is book. Four that is coming out. It's called Play Along. So, book one, we have Mile High Hockey. Mm -hmm. We talked about hockey. Mm -hmm. Mm Yeah. Okay. And then book two, The Right Move. So, these are all interconnected standalones. Right. So, So, there's like a character that gets introduced in a book, but it's not their book. So, so Mile High has Xander and Stevie as the main characters. So, then book two is Stevie's brother. And Stevie's best friend. Oh. And Ryan is a basketball player. 
So we have hockey, basketball, mm. and then caught up is book three. And we have Kai who lives in the same apartment as Ryan from book two and their friends. Love it. Okay. okay. So what's book three about? Book three is baseball. <laughs> we have it's going through every sport. all the sports. Yes. So we have that. That was my favorite book three, the baseball book caught up. It is he is a hot single dad, a moody, hot single dad, which mm. is like one of my favorites. I literally married one. I was so into <laughs> it. Like that is like my one of my favorite tropes. And book four is Kai's brother okay. and Kai and Isaiah. The woman works for the baseball team. OK, so they're all interconnected, but you can could read them as standalones but it comes out june 11th and i love them so much book three was for sure my favorite okay but my favorite would probably go caught up the baseball and then the hockey mile high and then i didn't love the right move Mm -hmm. but still like an easy fun read yeah Mm -hmm. they're really really good i feel like uh, i have a couple sports books, which is weird. I feel like 2024, it's going to be like the year of like the sports romance because so many yeah. like series, they're like c- continuing or wrapping up. Yeah. Them. And mm-hmm. or oh, like okay. new ones, authors that have never done. They're like, sport. oh, the hockey thing was so popular. Yeah. And like so many new sports books. Like I feel like 2024, it's going to be like the year of athletic romances, I know which I'm here for. Tessa Bailey's new one is the golf Yes. yes. Right. And I yes. was like, all right. And she's not normally like a sports romance author. She's just like a rom com author. But yeah. again, yeah. like yeah. they're like so many of the authors we're are putting yeah, like, in a We're sport. putting that one in our TBR crate, like our, our subscription. The Tessa Bailey mm-hmm. one. Yeah. Cute. Caught I've never up. read a golf one. I don't even know of one. I'm all it's like fun, like a different yeah. yeah. They're like next year, badminton in love. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! I mean, yeah, <laughs> racquetball. And like they just like competitive meet. pickleball yeah. romance. That would be cute, like an elderly couple, like <laughs> meet, like a racquetball court. Yeah, so I mean, probably one spice for yeah, physical yeah. reasons. I would be okay with it being a one chili pepper. I think, <laughs> I think I'd for that, yeah, yeah, I think I'd be. What okay would with that. you chili pepper rate these books? So, well, I mean, they're. Three. Okay. Love it. I mean, they're all different, you yeah. know, and some of like the spice is a little bit more like kinky than this couple is or, you know, gotcha. but um, Xander and Stevie in Mile High, the hockey one, yeah. they're a little bit naughtier. Okay. And okay. the first one. Yes. 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 I'm assuming because it's called Mile High. And- well, he is a hockey star and they have their own like charter plane. Yeah. And Stevie is the flight attendant. Uh, Perfect. So that's why it's called Mile High. Love it. But that um, one's probably. Do they do it on the plane? I uh, read to find out. Oh, dang. Yeah. <laughs> I like no, Zoom they're. In. Well, and they're like, they're just fun, easy. Yeah. And she's a really great author. Like the way she writes is very like you are sucked in by book one. Okay, which is it. not book one, page one, chapter one. There we go. So obviously the first of book many one. things. Okay, I'm all, I'm very intrigued by this series. Well, in the book four, we don't. She has not come out and say, but the epilogue kind of like is leading us mm. to believe that it's about those the two. single dad's brother. And yep. yes, I'm. I would be shook if it wasn't. Okay. But it's going to be like an enemies to lovers. Shook. Shook. <laughs> Shook it. <laughs> so I'm excited. I love yep. Enemies to Lovers. So Me too. June, you said? June 11th. Yes. Okay. Enemies to Lovers is my favorite trope. Same. It really In is. Romance. So good. Same. We wanted to interrupt this podcast to tell you about a very important event that is happening at LitJoyCrate.com. Oh my gosh, tell us. I know. On, on February 21st, Lunacorns will get early access to the Vampire Academy Collector's Edition box set. So this box set is gorgeous. It has features we've never done before, which we always try and do something a little special. But this one is pretty epic. Um, It drops on February 21st to Lunacorns, and it opens to the public on the 22nd. And if you're like, Alex, what's a Lunacorn? I can tell you. (laughs) A Lunacorn is our nickname for our membership group. Our membership group is a group of readers just like you, they come back to LitJoy and get extra perks. So 
They have early access. Mm -hmm. There's Lunicorn exclusive items. Mm -hmm. There's extra Lunicorn discounts. And we have a a Facebook membership group where we do lives and we reveal product ahead of time, where we ask a bunch of questions or feedback on what product we want or they want us to do. So it's kind of just like this really cool book club, nerdy book club that we have at LitJoy. So make sure to check out our Lunicorns membership. It's titled membership at the top of our website. And if you're just here for Vampire Academy, it opens to the public on the 22nd. So oh, so excited for this. Yes, me too. Okay, should we do the next one? Let's yes, do it. give us okay. three. So this is a new series, but it is, okay. This is one of my top tier series of all time. It's called The Hollow Boys by Monty J. Mm-hmm. Yes. So this is a very dark romance series okay i think you've brought it up to me before i try to bring it up like if i am at the grocery store i try to bring it up <laughs> with everyone that i've ever met so tell me like let's say i don't know what a dark romance okay is. what does that so, mean so there are dark themes so the hollow boys are about these four rich boys they're at college age okay and they go to this like preppy college and there is a murder mystery Ah. there is um town corruption and each one of the books is about each one of the boys in the group and there's like an underlying murder mystery and there's an underlying town like there is a sex trafficking ring in the uh, town. And so the murder is tied in to the town's corruption. Mm-hmm. And so throughout the five books, you're they're trying to right the wrongs, mm-hmm. basically. But um a dark romance, there's murder, there's a little bit of gore, okay. there's bloody these are is this like the haunting of Adelaide? Does that consider? No. Um, I haven't read that one. Don't. No. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. Maybe I should. Have I didn't you, love, you can share whatever I, you want. It's your I opinion. didn't love Haunting Adeline because. Oh, Adeline. Okay. Yes. And then it's Hunting is book two. I love a toxic, dark bad boy. But he also has to have this inner cinnamon roll to make me love him. Mm -hmm. And I feel like Haunting Adeline was just the toxic bad boy. He did not have enough redeeming qualities for me to fall in love with him. Gotcha. I just need a little bit more hair pets, you know? Like, I just need... I don't know where that was going to go. Fascinating. (laughs) With the hand coming up, too. (laughs) No, I just need a little bit more sweetness than Zade Mm. in Haunting Adeline has. But all of these hollow boys... Yeah, I know. Well... Uh, Xander, Zayden, Zayd, Thatcher. <laughs> Anyways, carry Stop, on. because Thatcher is my book boyfriend in The Hollow Boys. Oh, I love it. Yeah. What are the other so, ones? Their names. Mm-hmm. I'm on the spa. Sorry, you don't have to do that. <laughs> Alistair. Okay. Ooh. Rook. Yep. Ooh. Ha. And he's like, ha. he like has a motorcycle, the cigarettes. He's like, you know, like he's like oh, yeah. the epitome of like, bad boy like textbook tattoos like bad cool, cool, cool. they're all bad boys but and then thatcher mm. mm-hmm. he is the son of the town's serial killer and as he, one is uh, of, of course <laughs> and his dad um was found put away for life and thatcher think about draco malfoy mm-hmm vibes like he's always wearing like he'll have like a prada sweater and loafers and you know, like he's very clean textbook like ocd mm-hmm. and he is also a serial killer but like a dexter type serial killer so to kind of like right his dad's wrongs in his head he finds serial killers uh, he and kills then kills them the bad guys fascinating hot oh. <laughs> therapy but yes <laughs> yeah therapy. no but he and then um so 
Okay. So the Hollow Boys yes. is complete. Okay. okay. It's done. And is it, it's three books, you said? Five. 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 Okay. And then, so this new series, we don't have a date yet, but she said 2024, is a next gen. So Ooh. these are all of their kids. Awesome. Oh, mm-hmm. So they're procreated. Mm-hmm. They, <laughs> yeah. They so made they're, more of them. They're, and there is like the most happy endings in each one of the books. Okay. And the author, Monty, has her like newsletter and you can go on and read epilogues for each one of the couples. And then it ties a little bit more into this next gen. Perfect. Okay. That's kind of so what, excited. yeah, that's the Bad Boy Billionaire series. Yeah. That, I don't know why it's called that because they're none of them are bad boys. They're like all very responsible billionaires. But yeah. um, they they all have those epilogues too. Where mm-hmm. like in between each one, you're like reading yeah. up on them. And I'm like, oh, now they all have kids. And, yeah. 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 So all end. their epilogues are basically setting up for next gen, like weddings, babies, and then yep. the next gen. So the theme throughout hollow boys they always say to the sticks like when they're about to go murder some guy they'll be like to the sticks like basically like they are (laughs) they are like riding together to the river sticks so that is like that's their thing like to the sticks i'm actually going to get to the sticks tattooed on my body i'm so obsessed with this series i love it i'm hardcore about it i'm obsessed i I have like a whole bookish thing but anyway so they all just are like we're going to hell anyways Yes, but right we're going die. together. But we're going to go together. Right yes. So mm-hmm. this new series that is pretty awesome. called The River Sticks Heathen. <gasps> Cute. Hot. I know it's going to be hot. little baby. I know it's going to be hot. I'm so excited. Um, Monty is also so incredible as a human being. So it makes you want to like support her series even more mm-hmm. because she's just like – like a little dark ray of sunshine. <laughs> I love her so much. So that is all. We don't have a date. So I don't want to get too excited because yeah, with my luck, it'll be like December 31st. Oh, I'll just be like crying all year long. But <laughs> so excited about that. And that The Hollow Boys is five books. So you can just peruse that your way through. Minute. Yeah. Probably not your guys' jam. I know you guys are into like the murdery ones, but. I don't I know. I haven't actually tried one. Like, <gasps> yeah. Okay. I've only read one that I think falls under dark romance, and I hated it because there wasn't redeeming qualities in either character. Yeah, I can't. And so I was like, what was the point yeah. of this? Yes. I just hate everybody. Yeah. <laughs> and yes. I promptly dumped it. Like, I like the horrible to everyone but her trope, mm. you know, like yeah. to where, you know, he comes home like covering his enemy's blood and he's like, do you want to go get takeout? You know, because he's like really <laughs> is sweet. Yeah, I do I know what you mean. That. Like, I need the contrast. I yes. can't just have, and I do feel like, like I said, with Zayd and Haunting yeah. Adeline, he didn't have that, he didn't have enough cinnamon roll for me. Yeah. In the book I read, which I can't remember the title now, but it was like they treated each other so horribly that when he tried to treat her with just common decency, it seemed romantic. Yeah, no, I don't You like know, that. and I was like, there is, that guy's just one giant red flag, like everything, mm-hmm. you know, and, yeah. and the, the, the woman in the picture, basically same thing, had to learn how to deal with his trauma and all the way he was treating her. Like she was stuck in the marriage kind of a thing. Anyway, okay. so the whole time I'm just like, is he going to redeem himself? Is she going to redeem? No, there was just like weird, twisted hate sex and nothing redeeming about it. Oh, so I, I was that. like, what is this? Yeah. But and a lot of people like that. Like they don't want any fluffy. Like I know people who are like Zaid from Haunting Out is my number one. He's everything. And I'm like, but it's you know, like Rowan mm-hmm. and like we all have like yeah. our I just need more for me. Same. Yeah. I need mm-hmm. a little I'm not yucking anyone's yum. I no, just, of course. Yeah. For me not personally. What I like. Yeah. Yeah. When Thatcher is even my like I love him deeply. Mm-hmm. And other people are like, really? <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'm like, no, yeah. And they like another one of the boys are, you know, so I mean, it's personal opinion, but yeah. I and I think the sweet. authors too, a lot of romance authors try and do that where they hit different tropes in each of the books mm-hmm. because yeah. they know there's something in there for everyone. Yeah. Right. Which I I think is super fun about romance. Yeah. I, yeah. And also, yeah. And, and in other genres, they do that too. But romance can just put it out so quickly. Like it's mm-hmm. such a quick. Yeah. You can just. Some romance authors are like, no, like I wrote this over the weekend. And I'm like, yeah. oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just like such a fast paced genre. Yeah. So when can, I think mo- like you don't have to have fantasy, you have to have thousands of words of 
world building, but yes. in a hockey romance, what they're in Fair. Milwaukee? Like, what do you <laughs> exactly. need to world build? <laughs> so you can we get, don't need to talk about the apartment yes, complex yeah. aesthetic. No, <laughs> like, yeah, yep. I don't need to know about the front desk bellman's haircut. Yeah. You know, like you don't have to do that. So it's easier to knock them out. It's true because in fantasy, for some reason, we're like, well, tell us everything about them. I want to know their skin color, their eye color. I want to know what the kitchen looks like. I want to know how their grandma passed away. I want to know everything about their parents. Like, yeah, you need to know everything. Where their parents grew up. Do I need to know, like, you need to have this. You need the whole backstory. The world. And then you need the world building so that everything they're about to do, you can feel how important it is. And see in your head. Like, you want to see what the author's seeing. Yeah. I love it so much. (laughs) I was like, I'm for sure fantasy, just like, even, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I, I get sad when people won't read fantasy. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I know. What's nice about, I ro- know, oh, teardrop. What's nice oh. about romance is I feel like it kind of like, you can kind of, you can kind of mix romance with any of your choice of liquor. It's yes. like apple juice. You're yeah. like, <laughs> it's like you can mix yeah. it with any kind of genre and it kind of. It works. Yeah. Works. I just think it makes any genre better. If there's a little bit of romance, yes. yes. I mean, obviously, I obviously. feel that way. I don't want to, yeah. It's, I need to, so, I just want that mm, fluff. Even if it's not fluffy, I, it's fluffy if it's romance. Mm-hmm. Okay, wait, are we on three or four? Oh, sorry, I just realized. I was like, okay, I'm so into this. Okay, so now we um, we have another sports one. The yeah. Rule Book by Sarah Adams Okay, mm-hmm. comes out April 2nd. Did you guys read The Cheat Sheet? Oh, it's on my list. It's on okay. my short list. So... This is a duology of the cheat sheet. So it's in the cheat sheet is a football player and a ballerina and the rule book. And it is pure fluff, like the sweetest, cutest. Yes. Um, And then the rule book is a football player. He's a tight end. Shout out Travis Kelsey. (laughs) And then his agent. But they were actually together a long time ago. So it's okay. a second chance romance. Oh. Vegas wedding. Fun. Fun. Vegas wedding. Um, so Sarah Adams is not known for spice. She writes a lot of closed door romances. The cheat sheet is closed door. Okay. So this one, this is a quote from her. The doors are wide open. Ah. Uh. So, but since she is known for these closed door romances, she said she's putting like almost like a glossary in the beginning with the pages that have the spice on them. So you can absolutely just skip them if you'd like. Oh, so for her readers who don't mm-hmm. want that, she's making it very easy to oh. skip that if you'd like. Well, that's helpful. Yeah. She's really sweet too. She's a big Swifty and <laughs> the vibes are just like, she has they're, they're. good vibes. I love it. She has really good vibes. So excited about that one. Okay. Um, Leather and Lark. This is book two oh. to Butcher and the Blackbird. Okay. I have, have you guys heard, heard about Butcher no. and the Blackbird? No. Tell me. OMG. Okay. Bryn, <laughs> Bryn Weaver. She is this little Canadian cutie. And she wrote, I think I may have a thing for serial killers because this is also <laughs> a serial killer book. However, but you said you like murder mystery. So that makes sense. Maybe I just like the murder aspect. I don't know. But Butcher and the Blackbird is two rival serial killers. Oh. oh. The man a is a serial killer and the woman is a serial killer. Oh. So then they get to get they these are all Dexter type serial killers. Like they kill bad guys. Oh, for fun. Okay. They I'm like, there's a lot of moder- murder podcasts. I see it trickling into yeah, romance no, now. No, it's it's based, they're all Dexter type, the ones that I read. Even you don't want to. They're not like well, then it makes killing a sweet little old it. lady. Yeah. You're just like, mm, okay. <laughs> but so it is. These two rival serial killers get together once a year to compete. Oh, to kill a bad guy, and then they kind of like. However, it is insanely gory while being a rom com. This is a rom com. Okay, <laughs> it's a rom com. It's hilarious. It's, it, I feel like it would have to be funny to get through it. Yes. Well, and the way Bryn writes is so good because she is writing something 
horrifying and you're laughing through it. So she, this it is, feels very like, like there's a few like Coen brother movies like that, like Fargo or like, yes, yes, yes. Where it's like, it's pretty gruesome, yeah. but also like the irony of it or just like the awkwardness. Yes. Or, yeah. And then the, I mean, it's a bromance book too. So you have these two and it's a slow burn because they only meet up once a year but they talk and they really are falling in love with each other over the years. But when they do come together, it is like the most spicy, fireworked, uniting. Oh, it's so good. However, if you don't like to read, this is one of the best audiobooks that I've ever listened to. I read it and then everyone's like the audiobook, the audiobook. So Joe Arden, Mm -hmm. have you heard of Joe Arden? Oh, he's is, a reader. Yeah, he's a mm-hmm. narrator. And it is a dual no- narration. So yes. you have both of the characters actually speaking to each other. Mm-hmm. And um, Rowan, the male character, has an Irish accent. And Joe just does it so well. Mm-hmm. It's oh God, it's so good. Okay, okay, so why I'm talking about that one is Leather and Lark is Rowan's okay. brother and Sloane's best friend. Okay. So it is book two to Butcher and the Blackbird. Do they know that their friends and sister, whatever, are serial killers? Yes. Oh, so they're cool. Then. Of course. Oh, Why perfect. wouldn't you be? You know? Are they? Do we know? We have to read and find out. I'm all, that's the question I have immediately. I'm like, are they also in on this? <laughs> and so in the first book, are they getting together once a year to compare and then they always have sex? No. 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 So that's what I assumed. So no. No, way off. Okay. They're it technically enemies to lovers because they're but they're yeah. they're just like best friends. Gotcha. And you can tell they're like falling in love with each other. And Rowan is this like he doesn't murder gracefully, like he's like a brute force, while also being the most golden retriever cinnamon <laughs> roll ever. Like he is so sweet, but very like cold, but also like one of the most romantic male characters I've ever read. Interesting. Like, he is everything. Have you guys watched uh, the series You? Mm-hmm. Yes. Like, all of them? Yeah. Uh, so I don't I've, know if I've I seen finished all... this last one. The second one, though, reminds me of this, right? Because, like, he marries a serial killer. Yes. 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 Spoiler, but sorry. I, but... but they were so... Um, Toxic? They, no, they were more, like, emotional about their killing. The, they're, oh. they, like, this is almost like... Um, like a business. Like they're like, no, like this is a bad guy. We need to take him down. Okay. Like they're very um pragmatic about it. Yes. They're not like, oh, we looked at me the wrong way. Like you was. <laughs> like I'm just yes. yes. No, like they're very like they are calm, cool, collected, and they okay. just have a hobby of killing bad guys. I love that for them. I see. <laughs> same. It's really, really, really sweet. I call that just morally gray. That's you a know, good way a, to put it. It's a morally great. It yeah. reminds me yeah. of how in fantasy, the there is a lot of characters who are like, I will kill him. And then they do. Like, they'll kill someone who tries to hurt their, their like, their significant other or yeah. their mate. Yeah. Hollow uh, boys. Yeah. And they, won't, and they won't even. But it's like, it's interesting in fantasy or versus in real life, like rom-coms, because Rom-coms are, like, set in the real world, yeah. like, with the real world rules. Yes. But it seems like in fantasy, it's set in, like, there's a different law of, of like, ethics, right? Because, yeah. like— Almost non-existent. Right. Yeah. Where, like, I just—you know, I just read Fourth Wing and, or, or Iron Flame, and there's a part okay. where a male character just kills this other male character who was torturing his— significant other right because she was uh, and being tortured for days and days right. and it was like okay well as a reader you're like clearly like just kill that guy yeah <laughs> yeah and then you do and we don't think anything of it mm-hmm. but in like a rom-com we're like wait what my my murder ethics fly out the window in books <laughs> like there's no such thing like i what's a moral like yeah. no like, everybody's like, the, like everybody's it's for love like the, every everyone is up for to me yeah. like, it's like romantic you're like Thank you for yes. being that guy for me. You love me so much. That's I think so about nice. every time I think about this, Emily McIntyre's book, Hooked, he cuts a man's tongue out oh. for calling the woman the B word. And I was like, 
That's hot. <laughs> and then, like, what? in real life, you'd be like, you have ruined our life. You have ruined our life. <laughs> like, uh... But I was like, that is so sweet that he did that for her. <laughs> uh, it's true. It's true. And it, just like what you're saying, like, it depends on the genre I'm reading. Because mm-hmm. if it's real life feeling in the romance, I'm yeah. kind of like, I'm a little disturbed at how much I enjoyed that scene. Yeah. If it's fantasy. I'm like, obviously. You're like, next page. <laughs> yeah. Don't even, doesn't even like perk my morality okay, up. Yeah. So, so I'm like, obs. Like, so <laughs> I made a reel about blonde haired, morally gray men. And I put Legolas on there. And Lord of the Rings. And I've had so many comments being like, he is not morally gray. I'm like, he <laughs> has murdered yeah. so many people. To me, that's more like, sure, he's killing the bad guy. But he's, remember he's when killing. he like kills that elephant? Like, what if yeah. that has a baby? Oh, oh. <laughs> but that will haunt me what? forever. <laughs> okay, but, you know what I mean? He's yeah. not like a sweet little... Like that elephant, I know, could have a family. Like Dumbo could be waiting for the mom, and he killed giant it. husk Dumbo. It's more like a mammoth, isn't no, it? No, they're called like elephants. I think it's <laughs> fancy. I think it's like P-H- JK is just rolling, or JK, or no, no, it's a TR, JR Tolkien. Tolkien, just, yeah, Tolkien's just like rolling in his grave. I got so many comments like that. Someone, yeah, don't mess with Lord of the Rings fans. No, and yeah. I, and, well, and I did. I have a whole G Spot series about the Lord of the Rings, and I, someone. A man wrote, Tolkien is rolling in his grave. And all he wrote was, that's hot. <laughs> and he he didn't love that. But yeah. it's fine. I love it. It's so much. It's fine. Fantastic. Okay. Fantastic. okay. Just like if someone can just have a sense of humor, it's all for escapism. Like stories are incredible. Well, and I hope that Tolkien would see my video and be like, <laughs> You know, like maybe he would giggle. He that guy doesn't know him. Maybe he would think hundred percent. He probably not. He probably would be like, "What's a G spot?" And you're like, "Does Tolkien know where to find?" (laughs) Maybe, maybe I should do an author one. Oh, oh no, my God! Do not. We did not condone it. (laughs) I'm gonna tag you guys. I will do it. (laughs) Okay, next up. This is one I was telling you about earlier. So Allie Hazelwood is a known for her rom-coms she has the whole women in stem series she writes cute fluffy rom-coms so she said she had this idea i know what you're gonna say i am so excited for this one it is called bride yes and is a paranormal vampire werewolf book Yes. I'm so happy. So we have heard a lot of buzz about this one. Yes. Just because well, it world. is like so shot. Like yeah. a werewolf in a vampire book. Okay. But the fact that she is writing it is like so fun. I'm so excited. So, like, I have to read it just like is it gonna be rom com y or is it gonna be more we don't know. <laughs> but the woman is the daughter of like the vampire king. Yes. I'm gathering. And then the man is the next alpha of the werewolf mm. pack. And it's like a faded mates arranged marriage. Kind of like a underworld. <gasps> yeah. Yes. You know, one with Kate yeah, Beckinson. Yeah. Yes. Weirdly, not weirdly, but it's one of my husband's favorite series. So I've unfortunately seen it many times. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. Like that's it's his so like his ideal yeah. woman. You well, know? the the Blood Wars is the one. That the werewolf, mm-hmm. the lichen, the lichen clan, and the where, and so like, is this going to be like, like a, a war that? Occurs, yeah, or is it- I mean, judging by the cover, it is like an illustrated cover, so I'm assuming it's not going to be dark. Yeah, we don't know. I we don't we don't know we don't because I read or I was just I just started a romance novel the other day and it had like a cute bubblegum cover you know like two love two kids who look like they're in love and i was like by page five i was like not today satan <laughs> i was like i need to take a little breather breather and come back i just think Sometimes romance novels are confusing yes yeah. covers i think those covers we talked about this last time yeah. but i think they're more t- for everyone else who's not reading the book so they're not uncomfortable yeah. with someone reading something explicit mm-hmm. but sometimes they're misleading and like what you're yeah. getting into i feel oh. like as an author you're kind of doing yourself a disservice because if you have this like cutesy rom-com cover and then there's like dark themes to it you're not people aren't going to finish it because it's those, confusing yeah, yeah well those fluffy rom-com readers are like oh i want to read this and they get in there like mm. so they're only you're only getting yeah a chapter it's on tricky. kindle you know 
Yeah. It's tricky to do romance covers just in general. I think that that's super tricky. I think book covers in general. A lot of people just shop by book covers. I do. Almost all people. When people are like, don't judge a book by its cover, I'm all... We all do. That's called marketing. I will 100%. That's that's literally what the book covers are for. I know. I bought the Tea and the Tempest or the Tempest and the Tea, that new one that's coming out next year. I bought it from Waterstones because I like the cover. It did get buzzed and we had talked about how we want to read it. But usually I don't actually buy a book ahead of time. I usually read it first on my Kindle or listen to it on Audible Okay. And then I purchase the physical copy. Right. Yeah. Well, why would you want it if it's? I just have just limited book it? space. Totally. I have I have bookshelves in every room, and they're full. <laughs> I, I love that. I love it's that. like it's like yeah. Belle's dream. Yeah. Someday Cute. I have a dream house, and the only thing that I have really visualized is the library. <laughs> I want like I picture like the Malfoy Manor library is like my yes. dream library, like dark and like. I think we're a little evil as I yeah am. as we're as we're listening. I love to a dark this, library I think, too. Yeah, mm-hmm. like dark green or dark moody, blue. Yeah, just like moody, moody like that. Yeah, because yeah. I, I just want to cozy up in there. And so yeah. I just so I built my library recently. And, mm-hmm. Um, in preparation for building my library, I was like, I got to fill it up. You know, it's going to be just empty shelves everywhere because I'm gonna. It's like a two story thing, oh, and I spent the next cool. two years collecting certain books, and to the point where I'm like, oh no. <laughs> I have overcorrected. Yes. <laughs> I have like, a lot of books. Like well, and then you're like, how shelves. are you going to store them? Like, how are you going to yeah. organize them? That's yeah. like a whole other thing. Yeah. I always like, Alex, help me. So yeah. she did. She I did like, do you do them. by like genre? Do you do by yeah, author? Both. Do you do like how? I did it by genre. Okay. And then I did it alphabetically. Okay. <laughs> so we have like my classic section or my outlander section. She had a whole section that was just outlander aesthetic. <laughs> I love that. You know, I like certain groupings. She has like like Greek mythology, yes. mythology, lore, fairy tales, mm-hmm. all kind of in one section. Okay. Then like anything but that then was. But then aren't those all in the fantasy? Yeah, but I, I do have like um, adult and yeah. young adult fantasy fiction that I did all alphabetically. Okay. That wasn't like a subgenre. Yeah, if that makes sense. I feel like that would and stress we, me out trying to like sort. It was a, little, it my was a lot. Malfoy it was fun. Malfoy Manor Library. Yeah, just like hire if you're yeah, if you're rich enough you. to have a Malfoy Manor Library, just hire a person. I wouldn't be doing it myself. You're right. <laughs> just realize if you get to that point yeah. in life, someone else yeah. is organizing. I don't think it's something that I need to stress about. That's fair. How I'm going to organize my Malfoy Manor? <laughs> Maybe. Unfortunately, I'm you like, know what? I'm going to manifest a yeah, Malfoy yeah. Manor <laughs> Library. I was like, or we all. Build a commune and build a giant library. And then all the doors to our homes just lead to this. Like underground tunnels library. into a library at the same We all just start weeping. We're all like, oh my gosh. <laughs> they all have like these secret doors that enter into the secret library that is like Malfoy Manor. I'm like, I'm, sorry. I'm just like, I just can see the Netflix wow. special now about how it started with a library and then turned into a cult. <laughs> Uh, yeah we would have our own like hbo special like not yes. a good one they're like they all have tunnels, tunnels that led to a, a library <laughs> they thought it'd be more nefarious <laughs> and then there's like a random like prison in the bottom and okay half of them didn't know about you're <laughs> <laughs> definitely dark and twisted yeah <laughs> But little you're do welcome. they know. You're, you're welcome for all these creepy vibes i'm bringing <laughs> okay last one <laughs> last one Pivot. yes hannah grace Row Icebreaker. Yes. yes. And it's the Maple Hills series. Yes. So there's Icebreaker, Wildfire, yep. and Daydream. Yes. So Love Daydream it. is Henry's yes. book. Yay. So, so sweet. it is marked for June 6th, but Hannah has said that that is just like a placeholder and that we don't know exactly when, but summer of 2024. Perfect. So Henry was a pretty main character in Icebreaker. Yes. He was kind of like the best friend. Yeah, he was kind of like um like the men the mentee. The like he like he was mentored and kind of like taken under the wing yeah. of the main character as like yeah. a little brother figure. Yes. Isn't he he was also the one that like got him all in trouble. Um, no, 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 no. That that's, wasn't him. that's the main character of Wildfire. That was Wildfire. He got yeah, he got him all in trouble. Henry's the one who's like kind of awkward. Oh, yes. He just, well, he seems to do fine with the ladies. (laughs) Well, he was my favorite. Like through Icebreaker, like I was like, he's like the golden retriever. Yes. But, but he's also not fluffy. Mm -hmm. No, he felt 
like maybe he was on the spectrum a little bit. 100 percent Because like he would just say exactly what he was thinking. Yeah. Yes. Like he wasn't like very like sweet and fluffy. Like he was more Yeah, he was blunt. like, Well, why would yeah. you make that joke? I obviously don't want to have sex with that woman. And you're like, yeah. Oh <laughs> yes. Like he'd be and very he clear. Was, yeah. He was just everything. Yeah. So Daydream is about him and his tutor. I love it. So all, they all she has given is the cover. So we really don't know anything except the tutor. It's, it's tutor and it's Henry and that's kind of all we know. I love it. But so excited. Icebreaker was one of my top reads of yeah. last year. Was, yeah. I think, well, I guess it's no, we're all, Where are we? What year? <laughs> so I'm super excited because Henry was my favorite. Yeah. And those are my anticipated reads. Oh my gosh. That's a great list. That's a fun list. I'm really excited. Like, I feel like there's, like, quite a few to, like, oh, The Bride by Ali Hazelwood is February 6th. I love it. Ooh, so that I'm one, so excited. Yeah, so that one will be out, too. Okay. In, like, that one month? That one's happening. Yeah. So they That's are so all scattered. We got a January, a February. And then the other ones, ooh, you know, summer. a little summer. And then June. Yeah, m- m- mostly summer. Whatever. I'm excited. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much. This is such a fun discussion, as always. I will talk books 24 7. (laughs) I love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Thanks for having me, you guys. We loved having you. And let's do this again. Yes. Please. I would love to. All right, reader. Thank you for listening to the Lit Dread podcast. Make sure to rate and review us. And like a good book, don't forget to recommend us to your friends.